Parmenides of Elia, Greek, Parmenides Ho Eliots Florida, late 6th or early 5th century BC was a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher from Elia in Magna Graecia Greater Greece, which included southern Italy. He was the founder of the Eliatic school of philosophy. The single known work by Parmenides is a poem, On Nature, only fragments of which survive. In it, Parmenides prescribes two views of reality. In The Way of Truth, a part of the poem, he explains how reality coined as what is is, is one, change is impossible, and existence is timeless, uniform, necessary, and unchanging. This is generally considered one of the first digressions into the philosophical concept of being, and has been contrasted with Heraclitus's statement that, no man ever steps into the same river twice, as one of the first digressions into the philosophical concept of becoming. Parmenides and Heraclitus are therefore generally considered two of the founders of ontology. Scholars have generally believed that either Parmenides was responding to Heraclitus, or Heraclitus to Parmenides, though opinion on who was responding to whom changed over the course of the 20th century. In The Way of Opinion, Parmenides explains the world of appearances, in which one's sensory faculties lead to conceptions which are false and deceitful. He has been considered the founder of metaphysics or ontology. Topic: Early Life Parmenides was born in the Greek colony of Elia now ASCEA, which, according to Herodotus, had been founded shortly before 535 BC. He was descended from a wealthy and illustrious family, his dates are uncertain, according to Diogenes Laetius, he flourished just before 500 BC, which would put his year of birth near 540 BC, but Plato has him visiting Athens at the age of 65, when Socrates was a young man, c. 450 BC, which, if true, suggests a year of birth of c. 515 BC. He was said to have been a pupil of Xenophanes, and regardless of whether they actually knew each other, Xenophanes' philosophy is the most obvious influence on Parmenides. Diogenes Laetius also describes Parmenides as a disciple of Amenius, son of Diocates, the Pythagorean, but there are no obvious Pythagorean elements in his thought. However, according to Sir William Smith, in Dictionary of Greek and Roman Biography and Mythology 1870, others content themselves with reckoning Parmenides as well as Zeno as belonging to the Pythagorean school, or with speaking of a Parmenidean life, in the same way as a Pythagorean life is spoken of, and even the censorious Timon allows Parmenides to have been a high-minded man, while Plato speaks of him with veneration, and Aristotle and others give him an unqualified preference over the rest of the Eleatics. Topic. Career The first hero cult of a philosopher we know of was Parmenides' dedication of a heroon to his teacher Amenius in Elia. Parmenides was the founder of the school of Elia, which also included Zeno of Elia and Melissus of Samos. Of his life in Elia, it was said that he had written the laws of the city. His most important pupil was Zeno, who according to Plato was 25 years his junior, and was regarded as his Aromanos. Parmenides had a large influence on Plato, who not only named a dialogue, Parmenides, after him, but always wrote about him with veneration. Thought William Smith also wrote in Dictionary of Greek and Roman Biography and Mythology, on the former reason is our guide, on the latter the eye that does not catch the object and re-echoing hearing. On the former path we convince ourselves that the existent neither has come into being, nor is perishable, and is entirely of one sort, without change and limit, neither past nor future, entirely included in the present. For it is as impossible that it can become and grow out of the existent, as that it could do so out of the non-existent, since the latter, non-existence, is absolutely inconceivable, and the former cannot precede itself, and every coming into existence presupposes a non-existence. By similar arguments divisibility, motion or change, as also infinity, are shut out from the absolutely existent, and the latter is represented as shut up in itself, so that it may be compared to a well-rounded ball, while thought is appropriated to it as its only positive definition. Thought and that which is thought of object coinciding, the corresponding passages of Plato, Aristotle, Theophrastus, and others, which authenticate this view of his theory. Topic. Parmenides' cosmology 
Cosmology originally comprised the greater part of his poem, him explaining the world's origins and operations. John Palmer notes, "...Parmenides' distinction among the principal modes of being and his derivation of the attributes that must belong to what must be, simply as such, qualify him to be seen as the founder of metaphysics or ontology as a domain of inquiry distinct from theology." Some idea of the sphericity of the Earth seems to have been known to both Parmenides and Empedocles. Parmenides also outlined the phases of the Moon, highlighted in a rhymed translation by Karl Popper. Smith stated, At the cosmogony of Parmenides, which was carried out very much in detail, we possess only a few fragments and notices, which are difficult to understand, according to which, with an approach to the doctrines of the Pythagoreans, he conceived the spherical mundane system, surrounded by a circle of the pure light Olympus, Uranus, in the center of this mundane system the solid Earth, and between the two the circle of the Milky Way, of the morning or evening star, of the Sun, the planets, and the Moon, which circle he regarded as a mixture of the two primordial elements. The fragments read, You will know the ether's nature, and in the ether all the signs, and the unseen works of the pure torch, of the brilliant sun, and from whence they came to be, and you will learn the wandering works of the round-eyed moon, and its nature, and you will know too the surrounding heaven, both whence it grew and how necessity directing it bound it, to furnish the limits of the stars, fr. 10. How the earth and sun and moon, and the shared ether and the heavenly milk and Olympus, outermost and the hot might of the stars began, to come to be, fr. 11. Topic. On nature Parmenides is one of the most significant of the pre-Socratic philosophers. His single known work, a poem conventionally titled On Nature, has survived only in fragments. Approximately 160 verses remain today from an original total that was probably near 800. The poem was originally divided into three parts. A proem Greek, proemian which introduced the entire work. A section known as the Way of Truth, Aletheia, Aletheia, and a section known as the Way of Appearance, Opinion, Doxa, Doxa. The proem is a narrative sequence in which the narrator travels beyond the beaten paths of mortal men to receive a revelation from an unnamed goddess, generally thought to be Persephone or Dyke, on the nature of reality. Aletheia, an estimated 90% of which has survived, and Doxa, most of which no longer exists, are then presented as the spoken revelation of the goddess without any accompanying narrative. Parmenides attempted to distinguish between the unity of nature and its variety, insisting in the way of truth upon the reality of its unity, which is therefore the object of knowledge, and upon the unreality of its variety, which is therefore the object, not of knowledge, but of opinion. In the way of opinion he propounded a theory of the world of seeming and its development, pointing out, however, that, in accordance with the principles already laid down, these cosmological speculations do not pretend to anything more than mere appearance. <laughs> Proem In the Proem, Parmenides describes the journey of the poet, escorted by maidens. The daughters of the sun made haste to escort me, having left the halls of night for the light. From the ordinary daytime world to a strange destination, outside our human paths. Carried in a whirling chariot, and attended by the daughters of Helios the sun, the man reaches a temple sacred to an unnamed goddess variously identified by the commentators as nature, wisdom, necessity or themis, by whom the rest of the poem is spoken. The goddess resides in a well-known mythological space, where night and day have their meeting place. Its essential character is that here all opposites are undivided, or one. He must learn all things, she tells him, both truth, which is certain, and human opinions, which are uncertain, for though one cannot rely on human opinions, they represent an aspect of the whole truth. <laughs> the way of truth The section known as the Way of Truth discusses that which is real and contrasts with the argument in the section called the Way of Opinion, which discusses that which is illusory. Under the Way of Truth, Parmenides stated that there are two ways of inquiry, that it is, on the one side, and that it is not, on the other side. He said that the latter argument is never feasible because there is no thing that cannot be, for never shall this prevail, that things that are not are. B7.1 there are extremely delicate issues here. In the original Greek the two ways are simply named, that is, hopos estenon, that not is, 
Hossaukesten B2.3 and 2.5 without the it inserted in our English translation. In ancient Greek, which, like many languages in the world, does not always require the presence of a subject for a verb, is functions as a grammatically complete sentence. Much debate has been focused on where and what the subject is. The simplest explanation as to why there is no subject here is that Parmenides wishes to express the simple, bare fact of existence in his mystical experience without the ordinary distinctions, just as the Latin pluet and the Greek way reigns mean it reigns. There is no subject for these impersonal verbs because they express the simple fact of reigning without specifying what is doing the reigning. This is, for instance, Hermann Frankel's thesis. Many scholars still reject this explanation and have produced more complex metaphysical explanations. Since existence is an immediately intuited fact, non-existence is the wrong path because a thing cannot disappear, just as something cannot originate from nothing. In such mystical experience Unio Mystica, however, the distinction between subject and object disappears along with the distinctions between objects, in addition to the fact that if nothing cannot be, it cannot be the object of thought either, thinking and the thought that it is are the same, for you will not find thinking apart from what is, in relation to which it is uttered, b8.34-36 for to be aware and to be are the same, b3 it is necessary to speak and to think what is, for being is, but nothing is not, b6.1-2 helplessness guides the wandering thought in their breasts, they are carried along deaf and blind alike, dazed, beasts without judgment, convinced that to be and not to be are the same and not the same, and that the road of all things is a backward turning one, b6.5-9 Thus, he concluded that, is, could not have, come into being, because, nothing comes from nothing. Existence is necessarily eternal. That which truly is X, has always been X, and was never becoming X, that which is becoming X was never nothing not X, but will never actually be. Parmenides was not struggling to formulate the laws of conservation of mass and conservation of energy, he was struggling with the metaphysics of change, which is still a relevant philosophical topic today. Moreover, he argued that movement was impossible because it requires moving into the void, and Parmenides identified the void with nothing, and therefore, by definition, it does not exist. That which does exist is the Parmenidean one, which is timeless, uniform, and unchanging. How could what is perish? How could it have come to be? For if it came into being, it is not, nor is it if ever it is going to be. Thus coming into being is extinguished, and destruction unknown. B8. 20 to 22 nor was it once nor will it be since it is now altogether one continuous for what coming to be of it will you seek in what way whence did it grow neither from what is not shall i allow you to say or think for it is not to be said or thought that it is not and what need could have impelled it to grow later or sooner if it began from nothing Thus, it must either be completely or not at all b8.5 to 11 what exists is now all at once one and continuous nor is it divisible, since it is all alike, nor is there any more or less of it in one place which might prevent it from holding together, but all is full of what is, b8.5-6, 8.22-24 and it is all one to me, where I am to begin, for I shall return there again. b5 Topic. Perception vs Logos Parmenides claimed that there is no truth in the opinions of the mortals. Genesis and destruction, as Parmenides emphasizes, is a false opinion, because to be means to be completely, once and for all. What exists can in no way not exist. For this view, that that which is not exists, can never predominate. You must debar your thought from this way of search, nor let ordinary experience in its variety force you along this way, namely, that of allowing the eye, sightless as it is, and the ear, full of sound, and the tongue, to rule, but you must judge by means of the reason logos, the much contested proof which is expounded by me, b7.128. 2. Topic. The way of opinion doxa. After the exposition of the Arsh, Arsh i.e. the origin, the necessary part of reality that is understood through reason or logos that it is, in the next section, the way of appearance, opinion, seeming, Parmenides proceeds to explain the structure of the becoming cosmos which is an illusion, of course, that comes from this origin. The structure of the cosmos is a fundamental binary principle that governs the manifestations of all the particulars. The ether fire of flame b8.56, which is gentle, mild, soft, thin and clear, and self-identical, and the other is, ignorant night, 
Body thick and heavy, the mortals lay down and decided well to name two forms i.e. the flaming light and obscure darkness of night, out of which it is necessary not to make one, and in this they are led astray. B8.53-4 The structure of the cosmos then generated is recollected by Aetius 2, 7, 1. For Parmenides says that there are circular bands wound round one upon the other, one made of the rare, the other of the dense, and others between these mixed of light and darkness. What surrounds them all is solid like a wall. Beneath it is a fiery band, and what is in the very middle of them all is solid, around which again is a fiery band. The most central of the mixed bands is for them all the origin and cause of motion and becoming, which he also calls steering goddess and keyholder and justice and necessity. The air has been separated off from the earth, vaporized by its more violent condensation, and the sun and the circle of the Milky Way are exhalations of fire. The moon is a mixture of both earth and fire. The ether lies around above all else, and beneath it is ranged that fiery part which we call heaven, beneath which are the regions around the earth. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Interpretations of Parmenides. The traditional interpretation of Parmenides' work is that he argued that the everyday perception of reality of the physical world as described in Doxa is mistaken, and that the reality of the world is one being as described in Aletheia, an unchanging, ungenerated, indestructible whole. Under the way of opinion, Parmenides set out a contrasting but more conventional view of the world, thereby becoming an early exponent of the duality of appearance and reality. For him and his pupils, the phenomena of movement and change are simply appearances of a changeless, eternal reality. This interpretation could settle because of various wrong translations of the fragments. For example, it is not at all clear that Parmenides refuted that which we call perception. The verb know in, used frequently by Parmenides, could better be translated as to be aware of than as to think. Furthermore, it is hard to believe that being is only within our heads, according to Parmenides. Parmenides' philosophy is presented in the form of poetry. The philosophy he argued was, he says, given to him by a goddess, though the mythological details in Parmenides' poem do not bear any close correspondence to anything known from traditional Greek mythology. Welcome, youth, who come attended by immortal charioteers and mares which bear you on your journey to our dwelling. For it is no evil fate that has set you to travel on this road, far from the beaten paths of men, but right and justice. It is meet that you learn all things. Both the unshakable heart of well-rounded truth and the opinions of mortals in which there is not true belief. B1.24-30 It is with respect to this religious, mystical context that recent generations of scholars such as Alexander P. Morelitos, Charles H. Kahn, and the controversial Peter Kingsley have begun to call parts of the traditional, rational, logical, philosophical interpretation of Parmenides into question Kingsley in particular stating that Parmenides practiced iatromancy. It has been claimed that previous scholars placed too little emphasis on the apocalyptic context in which Parmenides frames his revelation. As a result, traditional interpretations have put Parmenidean philosophy into a more modern, metaphysical context to which it is not necessarily well suited, which has led to misunderstanding of the true meaning and intention of Parmenides' message. The obscurity and fragmentary state of the text, however, renders almost every claim that can be made about Parmenides extremely contentious, and the traditional interpretation has by no means been abandoned. Parmenides' considerable influence on the thinking of Plato is undeniable, and in this respect Parmenides has influenced the whole history of Western philosophy, and is often seen as its grandfather. Even Plato himself, in The Sophist, refers to the work of our father Parmenides as something to be taken very seriously and treated with respect. In the Parmenides, the Eleatic philosopher, which may well be Parmenides himself, and Socrates argue about dialectic. In the Theaetetus, Socrates says that Parmenides alone among the wise Protagoras, Heraclitus, Empedocles, Epicharmus, and Homer denied that everything is change and motion. Parmenides is credited with a great deal of influence as the author of an Eleatic challenge. That determined the course of subsequent philosophers' inquiries. For example, the ideas of Empedocles, Anaxagoras, Leucippus, and Democritus have been seen as in response to Parmenides' arguments and conclusions. Parmenides' influence on philosophy reaches up till present times. The Italian philosopher Emmanuel Severino has founded his extended philosophical investigations on the words of Parmenides. His philosophy is sometimes called Neo-Parmenidism, and can be understood as an attempt to build a bridge between the poem on truth and the poem on opinion. <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence on the development of science 
Parmenides made the ontological argument against nothingness, essentially denying the possible existence of a void. According to Aristotle, this led Democritus and Leucippus, and many other physicists, to propose the atomic theory, which supposes that everything in the universe is either atoms or voids, specifically to contradict Parmenides' argument. Aristotle himself reasoned, in opposition to atomism, that in a complete vacuum, motion would encounter no resistance, and, "...no one could say why a thing once set in motion should stop anywhere, for why should it stop here rather than here? So that a thing will either be at rest or must be moved ad infinitum, unless something more powerful get in its way." See also Horror Vacui. Erwin Schrödinger identified Parmenides' monad of the "...way of truth," as being the conscious self in nature and the Greeks. The scientific implications of this view have been discussed by scientist Anthony Hyman. A shadow of Parmenides' ideas can be seen in the physical concept of block time, which considers existence to consist of past, present, and future, and the flow of time to be illusory. In his critique of this idea, Karl Popper called Einstein, Parmenides. However, Popper did write, so what was really new in Parmenides was his axiomatic deductive method, which Leucippus and Democritus turned into a hypothetical deductive method, and thus made part of scientific methodology. See also Philosophy Truthmaker theory Notes Topic references and further reading Austin, Scott 1986. Parmenides, Being, Bounds and Logic. Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-03559-4. Austin, Scott 2007, Parmenides and the History of Dialectic, Three Essays, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-19-3 Bacalis Nikolaus 2005, Handbook of Greek Philosophy, From Thales to the Stoics Analysis and Fragments, Trafford Publishing, ISBN 1-4120-4843-5 Barnes, Jonathan 1978. The Presocratic Philosophers 2 volumes. Routledge and Keegan Paul. Burnett J. 2003, Early Greek Philosophy, Kessinger Publishing, First Edition 1908, Kapek, Milich, 1991, The New Aspects of Time, Kluwer Kassin, Barbara, 1998, Parmenides sur l'étant ou sur la nature de l'étant, Greek Text and French Translation with Commentary, Editions du Soi. Cordero, Nesta Luis, 2004, By Being, It Is, The Thesis of Parmenides. Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-03-2 Cordero Nesta Luis ed. Parmenides, Venerable and Awesome Plato, Theaetetus 183e Las Vegas, Parmenides Publishing 2011. Proceedings of the International Symposium, Buenos Aires, 2007, ISBN 978-1-930972-33-9 Cox and A. H. 2009, the Fragments of Parmenides, a critical text with introduction and translation, the ancient testimonia and a commentary. Las Vegas, Parmenides Publishing New edition of Coxon 1986, ISBN 978-1-930972-67-4 Kurd, Patricia 2011, A Presocratics Reader, Selected Fragments and Testimonia, Hackett Publishing, ISBN 978-1603843058 Second edition Indianapolis, Cambridge 2011 Kurd, Patricia 2004, The Legacy of Parmenides, Eleatic Monism and Later Presocratic Thought, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN ISBN 978 one 930972 First edition Princeton University Press 1998 Gallup David, 1991, Parmenides of Elia, Fragments, University of Toronto Press. Guthrie W. K. C. A History of Greek Philosophy, The Presocratic Tradition from Parmenides to Democritus, Cambridge University Press. Heidegger, Martin, Parmenides Trans. Andre Schuwer and Richard Ridgevich, Indiana University Press, 1992. Herman, Arnold, 2005, The Illustrated to Think Like God, Pythagoras and Parmenides The Origins of Philosophy, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-17-9 Herman, Arnold, 2005, To Think Like God, Pythagoras and Parmenides The Origins of Philosophy, Fully Annotated Edition, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-00-1 Herman, Arnold, 2010, Plato's Parmenides, Text, Translation and Introduction
Introductory Essay, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-71-1 Hyman, Anthony 2007, The Selfseeker, Tane Valley Press. Explores the Parmenidean dialectic and its application to modern science. Kingsley, Peter 2001. In the Dark Places of Wisdom. Duckworth & Co. Kingsley, Peter 2003, Reality. California, Golden Sufi Center. ISBN 9781890350092. Kirk G. S. 1983. The Pre-Socratic Philosophers, Cambridge University Press, 2nd edition. Laetius, Diogenes Others, Parmenides. Lives of the Eminent Philosophers, 2–9. Translated by Hicks, Robert Drew 2 volume ed. Loeb Classical Library. Luchter, James 2011. Early Greek Thought, Before the Dawn. London, Bloomsbury Publishing. ISBN 978-0567353313. Lundstroth, Marguerite, Teilhaben und Erleiden in Platons Parmenides. Untersuchungen zum Gebrauch von Mietichain und Paschein. Vertumnus Vol. 6. Edition Ruprecht, Göttingen 2006, ISBN 978-3-7675-3080-5 Melchert, Norman 2002. The Great Conversation, A Historical Introduction to Philosophy. McGraw-Hill. ISBN 0-19-517510-7. Morelitos, Alexander P. D. 2007, The Root of Parmenides, A Study of Word, Image, and Argument in the Fragments, Parmenides Publishing, ISBN 978-1-930972-11-7 First edition Yale University Press 1970 Nietzsche, Friedrich, Philosophy in the Tragic Age of the Greeks, Regnery Gateway ISBN 0-89526-944-9 Popper, Karl R. 1998. The World of Parmenides. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-17301-9. Gilbert Ryle, Plato's Parmenides, in, Mind 48, 1939, pp. 129-51, 303-25. Martin Sir, Platon's Critic and Den Eliton. Vorschlage zur Interpretation des Platonischen Dialogues Parmenides, Hamburg 1969. Hans Gunter Zeckel, Der Parmenides, NGL Wert Verlag, Marburg, Lahn 1971. Extensive bibliography up to 2004 by Nesta Luis Cordero, an annotated bibliography by Raúl Carazan. Topic: <laughs> External links. Palmer, John. Parmenides. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Jeremy C. DeLong. Parmenides of Elia. Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Lecture Notes, Parmenides. S. Mark Cohen, University of Washington Parmenides and the Question of Being in Greek Thought with a Selection of Critical Judgments Parmenides of Elia, Critical Editions and Translations, Annotated List of the Critical Editions and of the English, German, French, Italian and Spanish Translations Parmenides Bilingual Anthology in Greek and English, Side by Side Fragments of Parmenides, Parallel Greek with links to Perseus, French, and English Burnett includes Parmenides' article from Encyclopædia Britannica 11th edition John Burnett, Early Greek Philosophy, 3rd edition 1920, Chap 4 Parmenides of Aelia includes fragments of Parmenides preserved for the most part by Simplicius including the way of belief and the way of truth What is Parmenides being, explanation of a philosophical enigma Works by or about Parmenides at Internet Archive Works by Parmenides at LibriVox public domain audiobooks.